So today, uh, our topic is uh, search advertising fraud, and I brought a book with me, and uh, this was really key to the case study I'm going to talk about, and, uh, but I'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, I'm Senior Pro Program Manager for Traffic Quality Strategy and Outreach uh, at Microsoft, and uh, our team deals with uh, specifically click fraud right now on the, uh, on the Bing and Yahoo Alliance uh, search network. So let's just get right into it. So what I want to take uh, you to take away today, three things. First of all, learn the angles, and that's an American saying, and when you, whenever you use the word angles, it means something negative. In other words, someone's trying to do something deceitful. So what I want you to do is learn how, what kind of fraud is out there, how the fraud works, the different MOs, and so you can be aware of it at the very least. Second, protect yourself. There are, there are a few thing, basic things you can do, especially if you're marketers out there um, running uh, SEM uh, campaigns uh, that you can do to help mitigate the risk of fraud. Now, there's no guarantee that uh, some of your spend will be compromised by fraudulent activity, but at least you'll be able to catch it sooner and uh, you'll be able to report it to the search engine provider and, and help, they'll help uh, resolve it and, and credit, make a credit adjustment for it, that traffic. And then finally, Microsoft is committed to fighting uh, click fraud and other types of fraud. That's something in our team, which has grown from four that I led a year ago, and now we're over 30. And, and that just shows you how big the problem is in fraud. So uh, fraud is something we're all familiar with. It's nothing new. Back in the old days, uh, before the internet, uh, you had uh, ID theft still happened, but people were stealing mail out of the mailboxes. They were stealing uh, information out of the garbage. Took, in the US anyway, your social security number and used that to create uh, new identities. Uh, now online, that's nothing new either. You had the, uh, the classic phishing um, scams where they make you think you're signing up, uh, you're, you're uh, confirming your password for your bank account, uh, when in fact you're giving up your information. They go ahead and compromise it and steal all your money. Uh, you also have lotto scams. In Europe, there were actual legitimate lotteries that were run for an international audience where you can win lots of money, but that was also uh, uh, taken and used against uh, naive people uh, who would send in money thinking that they have a 1 in 10 chance of winning a big prize, and in fact, it was just a scam. And then finally, the most famous was the 419 uh, Nigerian scam, where some secretary to the treasurer in Nigeria would send you an email, tell you that we have lots of money, it's locked up, we need your help to get to it, please send a thousand bucks and we'll give you 1% of that $300 million that's locked away. And you wouldn't believe that this got the most media attention in uh, the United States and North America of any scam. So many people fell for this. Uh, it, it was unbelievable. The FBI was uh, actually traveled and worked with the Nigerian government. And, and this is a full underground um, uh, industry, uh, the 419 Nigerian scam. Still going strong. So b before we go on to click and search advertising, I want to talk about display a little bit. Uh, Display advertising, the first banner ad was posted, this is uh, some debate, but either 1994, between 94 and 98. Some people say Wired Magazine Online was the first to have a commercial banner ad. Others say there was something earlier in 1994. Uh, but the reason we're not going to cover it is a, a couple things. Where search is really concentrated into a few big providers, um, you obviously, Google being the biggest, Display is still, hasn't, is still figuring it out. They're still trying to figure out a way to get that television money uh, into display, uh, which is a, more of a branding experience than a, than a uh, performance experience. And just to give you an idea how much battle is going on over display right now, this is a chart by a consulting company, and these are all companies that work in the advertising technology, display advertising technology space. I mean, there are literally probably 100 companies there. And, and I've read recently more co uh, media technology companies are getting funding, so they're all trying to get a piece of that pie. Several of these have been uh, bought up already, and uh, uh, even though we'll, our team knows we'll have to deal with display at some point, it's just not a big uh, uh, fraud threat right now. So we're going to go on to the search engines. Now the big three, Google globally is the biggest by far in almost every market. There's a few markets where it's behind, uh, but uh, the, the big three I'm going to refer to going forward is the North, for the North American market, which are Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Now, that's not to say that there are other big search engines that are taking advantage of uh, local cultures and language differences like uh, Baidu, and I looked up a few, and, and tell me if you've heard of these, uh, Guruji and Onyomi, Onyomo, which were Indian, uh, supposedly, but they were, everything's in beta, apparently. All the, all the Indian search engines are in beta, I found, when I was doing some research. Uh, but, so we'll be talking about the three big ones. 
So let's talk about the ecosystem, uh, the actors uh, that work in the search engine marketing space. First of all, you have traffic. You have the humans who actually click on the ads to try to find value out of the search engine. Uh, these people are real. Uh, they buy things, uh, they convert, which is the most important, they click on ads. However, there's another part of traffic that's the nefarious side, and these are what we call uh, uh, traffic uh, without any commercial intent. They can be human, such as click farms, where people are paid to click on ads. Uh, they're not paid to buy anything, so there's rarely any conversions related to that. And then there's, of course, computers that can be since they're machines, it can be very scaled out very widely, and uh, you know we refer them to, and typically they are actually botnets. So that's the traffic side. Now these people, they visit publishers, and publishers can be uh, anything from owned and operated, such as Google itself, it could be Yahoo Finance, it could be MSN, um, but uh, these big search engines have so many visitors, uh, they need more inventory to satisfy the demand. So what they do is they go out and they make uh, deals with other uh, properties, and in this case, the, the bigger properties, Comcast, YouTube, Wall Street Journal, Indian Times, they, uh, India Times, they, they, make, they strike deals with the Googles and the Bings and the, and the Yahoos uh, so that every time an ad is clicked on, they get a cut of that revenue. Typically, it's 80-20, where the, the syndicated publisher will get 80% of the dollar and then, uh, or the rupee, <laughs> and the, uh, the platform, the search engine, will get 20%. And then on the other end, you have, oh, then you have sub-syndication. This is where a lot of the fraud uh, uh, originates. Uh, when the syndicated parties, when they run out of inventory, uh, but you still have the search engines willing to serve ads, they contract out with sub-syndicators. And this is where it gets very gray, uh, because some of these sub-syndicators are affiliate programs, they're, 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 some of them have really high reputation, some of them are very, very scammy, and it's a very dangerous space. And I would love to see the sub-syndication world uh, wiped out and, and uh, put away and we not deal with it, but unfortunately it does make money. And at the, at the end of the day, business is about making money. So our job as a team is to fight as hard as we can to mitigate fraud and stop it where we find it. Then we get over the advertisers. You have the big global brands uh, as well as the local and small businesses, which is the, which is the uh, latest frontier in terms of search engine marketing for the search engines. They want to go out uh, partnering with aggregators, with the yellow pages, with local.com, and, and using their sales forces to reach all these local uh, uh, businesses and, uh, again, uh, create revenue from that. And finally, the search engine itself, which we've, I refer to as the marketplace. Two big players here. You have Google with AdSense, uh, which is uh, their syndicated uh, product, and then AdWords, which is all the ads on their search engine itself. And for the Search Alliance, uh, we've got the same thing. You can have ads on Bing or Yahoo, proper, owned and operated, or any uh, number of syndicated or eventually sub-syndicated partners. So that's the ecosystem.